Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna. I'm a little bit spooky and today we are recreating a look that Lisa Eldridge posted the other day. She did a dirty martini look on a model and well, you know I love green eyeshadow and I was incredibly inspired and I absolutely adore Lisa Eldridge. So uh, I, I needed to recreate it on my face and kind of play an experiment. Placement is slightly different than what I normally do. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to see how, if I could recreate the look, and here we are. So yeah, if you want to see how I got this look, following along with like, with uh, Lisa's techniques, and using some different product, because I don't have the palette she used, but boy do I want it, it is, it's in that dream cart that I have on her website that I've made a million times, which is basically everything she's ever made in that cart. Anyway, if you want to see how I got the look, chit chat with me, talk about how much we love Lisa Eldridge and how she's kind of the end all be all of makeup for me, then uh, yeah, just uh, keep on watching. But before you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know down below if there's any more looks you would like to see. Do you have any more of Lisa Eldridge's videos that you would like to see me try to recreate looks from or like some of her campaign work or red carpet looks that you would like to see me recreate and try to try to replicate on myself let me know in the comments and um, I might go dig through her IG and see what I see and to get some inspiration because it's nice to just be inspired by a, another makeup artist and see their techniques and just try to replicate them that's definitely where I get the most inspiration is just watching application and techniques stuff like that that's what inspires me and color stories not so much products these days it's more about that application and how the products are being used that's my inspiration anyway without further ado let's go ahead get into this makeup i'm gonna show you how i created this look with what products i already own and yeah let's uh let's get to the dirty martini glam All right, guys, so Lisa Eldridge posted a dirty martini look the other day on a model and I fell in love because it's obviously a look that's right up my alley. I love green eyeshadow. I love those olive tones, so I, I have to recreate it. So I'm gonna like loosely follow what she did and kind of create the same eye shape and look and everything. Is it too terribly far out of my wheelhouse? No. But I think it's going to be a beautiful holiday look, date night look, that kind of thing. So I want to recreate it myself. And I pulled some products I think would be conducive to the look. Now, I don't have Lisa's palette. I don't have anything from Lisa Eldridge, which makes me very, very sad. Do you know how many times I've made dream carts on her website? So many times. Anyway, so I pulled out the Yucca palette and the Metropolis palette, both from Natasha Denona, because they... Both have olive green colors in there that I think we could use to create the look and get something very similar to what Lisa created. I'm going to be gushing about Lisa in this video because she is kind of my end-all be-all of YouTube makeup artists. Of course, we have, you know, Yucca Palette. This is the color story. Now, I'm thinking this shade right here is going to be what we reach into for this one. Possibly this. Possibly this shade up here. We'll see where it takes us and what I feel like is needed. And then in Metropolis, we do have some olive tones as well. Now, her look was primarily shimmer through everywhere. No, not a ton of mattes or anything like that. I think she only used like two eyeshadow shades, really, and a liquid eyeshadow and an eyeliner. And uh, the palette she used is the one that is always in my cart when I look at her website. It's got the greens and the blues and all those pretty jewel tone colors that I love. And, uh... Yeah, it's it's the one I always kind of lust over when I look at her website and her eyeliners and her foundations and her jewelry and everything. Metropolis, obviously, we've got some colors here, like right in this region. We could use, I'm thinking, the, maybe somewhere between these two shades up here we could throw in. And yeah, we're going to just do a halo eye with a lifted outer corner, which is my actually, truly my favorite eyeshadow shape. I like having that spotlight here i like it to also be lifted and it's not a competing thing you can do both if you know my ramblings about liking lifted eye looks here we go <laughs> 
and that you can adapt any eyeshadow shape to or eyeshadow application technique to suit your eye shape and this is what suits my eye shape is to do in that lift on the outer corner because I do have hooded eyes that are my lids are very downturned so I'm all over the shop already because I've already had a lot of coffee and girl it ain't even that I haven't been up that long. Pulled the uh, Lancome 24 hour drama liquid pencil in green metropolitan. It pairs so beautifully with the Metropolis palette and this palette. I'm gonna start with this shade right here. This is a little bit more of a brown tone shade, but I think we can maybe green it up a little bit by mixing in a bit of this shade. We'll see. But it's this one right here in the top. Um, it's kind of a greenish bronzy type of color. We're gonna start with it. And I'm taking that on E27 and start to build that right out here on the outer corner. I don't have a liquid eyeshadow like what Lisa was using, but I think I might have an eyeshadow that kind of can give a similar effect. I'm just going to start to buff this right out here. And this is a metallic shade, but it's not glittery or anything. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with using a little bit of metallic in the crease. I think you can get away with it. It's fine. You don't have to always just put mattes everywhere uh, in the crease area. You can do what you want to do <laughs> and it will still make a pretty look. You see that still adds dimension and everything, but there's just a nice glow from it. So I'm going to focus it there and pull it up and out. And that's giving like a green kind of a reflect in there, but it's just kind of a deeper tone. I think the shade that she used was a little bit more in the um, green family. She used kind of little like greens and old golds and then more of a tealy eyeliner that really gave such a beautiful pop. I also loved all the tips for a watery eye that she threw in there. As somebody who is a watery eyed queen, <laughs> how many times do I tell you guys that I'm like, okay, I gotta take a break, my eyes are watering, I'll be back, or I gotta let that calm down? And she actually talked about how to keep, make eyeshadow and product grip on after the eye has been watering. Because that's one thing, even after it dries and you kind of wipe it away, it's so hard to patch it because it's like product just doesn't want to grip there anymore. And she actually explains how to get it to grip again by putting a little bit of powder. <laughs> like, oh, genius. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> that's only been something I've needed to know for <laughs> ever. Look how pretty that blends. And that's one thing, a metallic kind of shimmery shade like this is gonna blend a lot easier than a matte will sometimes. So if you're not great at blending, just use a satin or a slightly metallic shade if you don't want a ton of shimmer or something in your crease. But you, have, you struggle with blending, just use something with a soft sheen in it. It will make things blend and look more blendy. So much easier, just a little hack. Okay. So we got that on. And looky there, this 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 eye is watering a little bit. Um, by the way, I have done on my skincare, brows, eyes are primed. That will be all linked and listed below. Same brush. I'm going to take that same shade and I'm going to come right in here. And instead of being right on the lid, I'm actually going to take it just in this curve following the socket of my eye. Which normally I put like a shimmer, like light shade there. I'm gonna do this. This is a little bit different for me to do. I believe this is what she did in the video. <laughs> and I'm just gonna softly kind of let that come across. And I think there's obviously a lot of palettes I could have used for this. But yeah, I don't know. These are the first ones that popped in my head. I was like, okay, I could replicate that with these shadows or get something close. My goodness, that the palette that she used though in the video really is the most beautiful palette. <laughs> like I, I want like all of her products. Like I would go ham if I had the money to do that. I would buy everything on her website. I want them little earrings. I think they're precious. Her rings. I've been meaning to buy her book. <laughs> it's one of those things I just forget to do. I love watching her makeup history videos a lot. Definitely Lisa is someone who I have learned, honestly, I could say the most from as far as makeup goes. She was probably one of the first makeup channels that I watched on YouTube and just fell in love with her and her voice and her style and the way she did makeup. There was, she's incredibly relaxing to watch for one thing. She has the most beautiful speaking voice and just lovely personality. And 
I immediately just was like, okay, yep, love this. And would watch her, went through and watched probably everything she had already on YouTube at the time. And this was, I'm, I'm thinking, close to over 10 years ago at this point, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, this was early YouTube days. And I watched every single thing. And I've pretty much watched every single thing she has put out ever since. <laughs> like, I just always go back to her stuff. I get excited when I see a new video from her. I get excited about her new launches. I watch all about them <laughs> and lust after them. Okay, I'm just building that up a little bit. But she was definitely um, been the, one of the first channels that I watched that inspired me to want to do makeup even in like a professional setting. I loved watching just her technique and kind of just learning how to hold brushes and how to apply pressure and just these, all these little details that no one was really talking about back then. You know, she wasn't going on about product. It was about application. And that is still like my favorite type of, types of videos to watch because I really enjoy the education <laughs> side of it. Okay, that looks pretty. I like that. Okay. I'll cross the lid. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a little bit of Ray from the Yucca palette now, which is this one right here. And I'm going to sweep that across the blank spot of the lid. And I'm going to use a, where'd it go? I just had you in my hand, little brush. E27 from Sigma. And I'm going to take a little bit of that and we're going to graze that across. But um, I did get a request for some looks with the Yucca palette. So <laughs> I wanted to include that, that palette in the video today. I'm doing kind of a soft application of this to begin with, just to see where I want to go. And I'm taking everything pretty high over the crease. I'm just going to completely ignore the crease. And we're just focusing on bone structure. That's been really like a technique that I've been into and just being a little more experimental textures and where I'm putting them or finishes and not having to be so strict on myself. Like, oh no, we can only put shimmers on the lid and only here, only that. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I like the more editorial feel that this gives and I think it looks sophisticated and elegant and all those things that I like to incorporate in my makeup. Big brush, soften things up. All right, I'm gonna take just a touch of Makia from this palette as well. It's this one down here. I'm just gonna pat a little bit of that on the center of the lid over top of Ray. So we're doing like a soft application of everything and just keeping it pretty. And like a little more, I guess, approachable. And that just adds a pretty glitter wash across the lid. I like the, I'm kind of going for like a bit of more of a, sort of full on opaque application of things. Very watercolored esque I guess. I want this to feel like a look that anybody could wear. And not be an intimidating look. All right, that looks really pretty. Just soft and sweet and very olivey. What's funny is, you know, I don't like martinis at all. I, bleh, <laughs> especially like a dirty martini. Oh God, no. I can't stand the smell of olives and I can't stand the smell of alcohol. So if you put the two together, that is an absolute nightmare for me. <laughs> like, oh no, no, no. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I don't like the way any alcoholic like liquor smells. It makes me gag. And olives also kind of made me gag. <laughs> So that's just a pure nightmare of a drink for me. And I have tried one back in the day. I was a bit younger. Oh gosh, this was years ago. Me and my husband and my two friends were on like a little double date thing. We're like, let's try martinis. Let's try olive martinis, you know, old school, dirty martini and all this stuff. Cause we went to like kind of a fancy bar and we we're like, we're gonna be fancy. We're gonna see what this is like. And we all were like, oh. <laughs> 
all hated it. And this is coming from somebody who thoroughly enjoyed the, enjoyed the taste of Jägermeister. <laughs> I, I guess I don't have a very refined palate, but I will drink Jägermeister straight and be fine with that. But couldn't stand <laughs> a, a martini. I, I don't like very many cocktails at all. I, I actually, I just don't like liquor very much. Uh, the the set, oops, exception would have been Jaeger and uh, absinthe and like a Sazerac stuff like that. Like I like the the licorice drinks. I like those, even though I don't like licorice. I drink the heck out of those back in the day when I did drink. I don't drink anymore. I'm too old and <laughs> my body just doesn't like it anymore and I just smell things and gag now. I like the way this is looking. I think we're looking pretty. I'm going to kind of deepen things up just a bit on this outer corner. I'm back in with that original shade. I'm going to pull a little bit of Calanthea in from the Yucca palette, which is this one up here. And this looks super dark in the pan, but it actually comes off fairly sheer. It's buildable, but it's not like this super deep dark shade in application. I'm going to use that to add a little more of a greeny feel and darken up right there over that shimmer. So you still have that finish. It just adds a little depth, a little bit of Calanthea. Just like that. And I'm going to make sure that it all looks blended. I'm just going to grab a big blending brush, blending brush, big old blending brush. Make sure that's clean <laughs> and just buff over everything like so. Do, do, do. That is looking very pretty. I like the way this is coming together. And you know, just for a little bit extra sparkle, I want to pull this shade from the Metropolis palette. It's this one right here. It's just more of a topper shade, very, very sparkly. Not too dissimilar from some of the shades in Yucca, but a little bit. I'm still debating in my head, like having this middle debate, is it Yucca or Yucca? I'm just gonna pop beep, beep, beep. a little bit of that right there. The world may never know. Because then I heard somebody the other day say that they looked it up and it's Yucca. But I could have swore me and my husband Googled it and it was Yucca. I don't know. Because me and him had the debate <laughs> about it. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Spell it out phonetically for me. You can put Yucca or Yuck. Uh, <laughs> let me let me know how you pronounce it. I might have to do some more research. I'm going to build up a bit more Calanthea just out here. Then we're going to go into kind of a smoky liner. And uh, funny thing, I was watching Tati the other day and she was talking about Natasha Denona's uh, Xenon palette and the shade, I think, Cygnus. She was talking about how beautiful it is, and it's a shade she can't pronounce, so she had looked it up. And the funniest thing is that the book I was reading, that word was in it, you know, referring to what it is, like the what, part of a galaxy or whatever, I can't remember. Star system, something. I don't remember now, but <laughs> I was like, ha, there's that word. Isn't that the strangest thing? You could never even seen a word before, and all of a sudden it's everywhere. That That's a phenomenon, and that has a name. It's like when you buy a car, you suddenly start seeing that car everywhere, right? Like, I took an interest in Teslas, and now I see Teslas everywhere. So, it's one of those things. I can't wait to see a cyber truck in person. <sighs> oh, I'll see one of those. I want to touch it. I want to ride in it. Now, let's take this Lancome eyeliner. I'm going to go across the upper lid, across the lash line. These Lancome liners are phenomenal, by the way. Put up a little bit on the outer corner. I'm actually going to do like what Lisa did and use the lower lash line to create the wing. Grab a little liner brush. I love this one because it's like kind of fluffy. I don't know. It just it kind of blends and smudges just right. And it was from Shop Miss A. There's some brushes from those little sets that this is, I think, the Pawpaw collection that are just absolutely worth buying the whole collection just to get. All right. And over top of that, I'm going to take this shade right here from Metropolis. It's really dark, kind of cool tone, emerald, emeraldy green. It's very similar to the eyeliner. And use that to really intensify and smoke that out a bit. 
Yeah, don't mind me over here just talking about makeup looks for Christmas parties. Like, I go to Christmas parties that require <laughs> glam <laughs> and, like, elegant looks. But I'm always creating them with that in mind. Like, going to these cocktail parties, you know, for Christmas and holiday. Do I have any of those to go to? Absolutely not. <laughs> I do not. That kind of party is really not huge around here. It's more ugly. Christmas sweater parties and things you can kind of be silly and fun with. I want like a super elegant party. There is a Yule Ball this year that was well, an annual Yule Ball that I kind of want to go to because I feel like that might be a little bit more of a dressier thing. I mean, it's called a ball. Everybody tends to dress up for it. I'm going to smoke that out just a little bit. Very pretty. This would be the makeup I'd wear to that. To the Yule Ball. If I were to go, I, I want to go. See what the date is for it and all that still. But yeah, that's one thing I definitely would like to do this year. Go to a, a formal Christmas thing or holiday party. I'm going to clean up any fallout that I might have. I do have some glitter particles drop down. So that'll just take me just a second. I'm going to do that. I'm going to throw on some foundation and contour, bronze, all that stuff. And we'll come back for the finishing touches, like lower lash line, lips, blush, highlight, you know, those steps. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and just tie this up and get some foundation on. Okay, just slap some foundation on. A little light layer of the Smashbox always on uh, skin balancing foundation but I figured I'll go ahead and just show you like kind of the rest because and just breeze through it because I feel like it's kind of pertinent to look so since uh, I do look quite pale I figured we should definitely kind of warm the skin skin up because I think on my complexion when I go in with greens and stuff it can make me look a little on the sickly side so it's beneficial for me to have some warmth in the skin when I do looks like this so what I'm going to do is take the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Beautiful Skin Bronzer. And I'm going to use some of this to bring a little bit of life back into the face. I'm not going to like fully contour, but I'm just going to warm up the perimeter with this. So I'm going to breeze that really quickly and just kind of show you what I'm doing. So I feel like it, it plays into the whole vibe of having that little bit of bronze in there and everything. It's, it makes sense to show it. <laughs> so I'm taking a little bit of that on this brush. And just tapping that on. I want the skin to stay kind of fresh looking and not overdone. I think that looks really nice with kind of a glam eye sometimes. Is if you just pare down the rest of the face and have that one statement. And the eyes are kind of more the statement of this look. I haven't done concealer yet either. We'll get to that. I just like to do my cream bronzer and stuff first. And just create some nice warmth you know all around and the blush we're using today is also gonna be warm and peachy I'm gonna lean into like warm peaches for the rest of the face I think it's what uh, Lisa did as well before I do concealer we go ahead and do the lower lash line and then we can kind of tidy things up and have that really precise outer corner kind of backwards to how I normally do it but I think this might actually be beneficial so I'm gonna just take that Lancome liner and I'm going to Sharpen it because my goodness it got dull and we're gonna go right out here And come up from that lower lash line the way that Lisa did on the model and we're gonna Hope and pray My eyes don't start watering. This pencil is definitely getting towards its last legs. It's a little bit drier than it was a little less creamy, but we can still work with it All right, I'm gonna use this to create that wing like that. I think Lisa Eldridge worked for Lancome for a little while, didn't she? She was, I think, their creative director. And also, I think, was it Shiseido or Shiomura? It was Shiomura. Oh, I can't remember now. Talk about a wonderful career. I think she's had one of the, like, just interesting, most interesting careers. She's done so much. All right, I'm getting in that R line, too, under there. I'm just building as I go and seeing kind of where I want to take it. Bring this throughout the whole waterline will look good. May just not going smoked out with it, but just right in here. These wear just so well on the lower lash line and waterline. Now I'm gonna jump back to 
Metropolis, and we're going to take that dark green that we used on the upper lash line in the same way. I'm just going to come up a little bit. This is beneficial if you have hooded eyes so your wing doesn't get interrupted by the, like the fold. But it can also maybe pull the eye down a little bit, but it'll also make the eye look bigger. <laughs> so, you know, there's some give and take with it. Now what I'm going to do is take a smaller little brush, something I can kind of smudge a little lash line with. Use this little kind of flat guy and just soften all that out a little bit. We'll probably come back and do this again <laughs> after the concealer. Just want to get everything nice and blurry first. All right, now I'm going to take my original shade I used on the outer corner. Just pull some of that under here. Join things up again. All right, and then I'm going to jump over to Yucca, and we're going to grab the shade Ray that we used on the center, and we're going to hit the center and the lower lash line as well. Mimic what we did on the top. A little bit of Makia. 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 Good Lord. I learned how to pronounce that one. All right. And let's see a little bit of Calanthea. I'm going to put just there. And it says that inner corner. Sharpening up that inner corner a little bit with some of Calanthea because it's a little bit softer than the other shade I used. Now what I'm going to do is take a little, you can use a Q-tip or whatever, I'm just going to take a little flat brush and just kind of clean up. You can use a Q-tip or whatever for this. I just, I don't have any Q-tips in here, so I'm just using a brush, a little flat brush, and sharpening up that wing. Now we can take our concealer and we're going to use the Catrice Liquid Camouflage. Well, I'm just trying to kind of pan right now. A little bit in the usual spots. Grab a little concealer brush, run that out. Careful not to hit that eyeshadow or anything where it can bleed into the concealer. You don't want that. <laughs> we'll blend a little better once we get, we'll go in with a more detailed brush, but just for this initial part. I know it looks weird, just give it a minute. <laughs> I'll get back to it. Just a little flat brush. I'm just gonna make sure all that is Nice and crisp. And I'm just gonna make sure that concealer is blended out. So it reminds me a lot of like the reverse cat eye kind of look, which I do like. Foundation brush, just to make sure everything is seamless and kind of blended looking. All right, now I'm going to set the face with a little bit of powder. I'm just gonna use this number seven one. It's another one I'm panning. Currently, this video is really not about product, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to set my under eyes. And doing this will soften things up just a little bit. It makes it look a little more blended. I'm a fan of taking some translucent powder under there, even after, after I've done my lower lash line. Just kind of smoothing across, just right where that fades out. And really does kind of create just a little bit more of a blended look. A little bit easier. Because I struggle with blending my lower lash line sometimes. That's kind of a... Harder part for me. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, and just powdering where I need. I forgot I was going in with a liquid highlighter, but that's okay. We can do that over top. It'll be fine. Because what I'm using actually can play fairly well over powder with no issues. I'm going to take a little bit of flawless filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just going to tap a little bit of that on the cheekbones. I'm just going to take a little bit onto the back of my hand. Dab the brush in. Kind of work it in just a little. We can just delicately pat over and it will be fine. This doesn't go for all liquid highlighters, but it does fine with gloss filters. You can do this. Because believe me, I forget a lot of times and end up doing this and it doesn't disturb anything underneath. It just kind of flows right over the powder. It doesn't get all weird. I'm going to grab my Nude Gasm palette and just bring in a little bit more warmth and a subtle contour. Topi shade. I do love layering products. <laughs> and something that is going to make this look really finished on the eyes, I'm going to take my fluffy brush, make sure it's clean. And I'm going to take a little bit of that bronzer and just come right here and up. And just give something for those greens to kind of flow into. Almost like a transition shade. And to me that just gives a little bit more of a finished look. Blush, I'm going to use Warm Soul from MAC because it's beautiful. <laughs> and I feel like it will just 
go perfect with this look. But yeah, Warm Soul, classic favorite from MAC. I just actually got my hands on it. So it's a new favorite for me, but I know it's a classic product that everybody's loved forever. <laughs> and we're gonna take that right here, do a little blushiness. This feels like the perfect color. The outer corner of the eye even. I love that blush because it has that, just that soft little bit of glow in it. <sighs> so very nice. I also like to put a little in my nose. Okay, lashes. I'm going to curl them. It's a little curly curl. And then we're going to pop on some mascara. I dug in my little makeup stash of things to pan. Pulled out a couple of Lancome mascaras. We got Monster Big and we're going to use the Seals Booster. Because I don't want to do falsies today. I just want to do lashes. I just want to make them look nice and full. Let's so take a little bit of Seals Booster. Which I'm almost done with. I've been working through this. And it's about to go in the empties. All right, let's take some of Monster Big from Lancome. I'm using like all high-end products today. I don't know why. <laughs> Just gonna end up being what I wanted to pull for. I like Monster Big. I think that's a nice mascara. Lancome is one of the few brands that I would say their mascaras are nice. As far as high-end brands go. Most high-end mascaras I think are overrated. So everybody likes the Lashy Doll. I don't care for that one. I like Monster Big. I like the very volumizing ones. Oh goodness, I can't think of the other one I love from Lancome. It has a really pretty packaging. Anytime I see like a deluxe sample though available from one of, one of their mascaras, I take it. Was Monster Big a shout out to Big from Sex and the City? Okay. Very lashy. Definitely wanted a lashy look without going in with falsies. You could definitely do that. <clears throat> but I, something about keeping it just the lashes I like. And now at this point, you know, I like to kind of adjust things a little bit and tweak after I get the mascara on. So let me just take a, a little bit more of that first shade we use, that kind of bronzy, dirty color. And just make sure that it's coming up and out a little more. I always do it after I put the <laughs> mascara on. I was like, well, I got a little more eyeshadow to flow in with the rest. All right, I think I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Or am I? And of course, one last little blend to make sure we are all blended. <laughs> last little blend to make sure we're blended. All right. Okay, I'm gonna leave the eyes alone. I think. This is going to be the eye look complete to finish it off lips. And for lips, I'm going to keep it kind of soft peachy like Lisa did in her video. A little pulled back, a little restrained for me. Let me sort this hair out real quick. I have no idea what's going on with my hair today. It, it could be, it's, it's wild. It's so humid. My hair is definitely living its own best life. <laughs> I don't know if it's, well, I don't know if it's his best life, but it's definitely a living a life. It's doing something. It's large and in charge today. Let's put it that way. And you know, I ain't going to fight it. I'm going to let it be. Here's just going to be what it's going to be. Now, for lips, I pulled Mac Spice, Maybelline More Honey, and Elf Mocha Twist. I feel like that ties into Warm Soul really well. Like, they look so similar. I think that will be the way we'll go. All right, let's take a little bit of... Max Spice. And we're going to take some of Maybelline More Honey. This is one of their Ultimates. I'm doing just kind of a light blurry application. All right. Yeah, I like that lip with this. And now I'm going to take a little bit of Mocha Twist. Just in the center. I do feel like we need a little bit of setting spray. So I'm going to take a little bit of Milani Make It Last. Okay, and here's the look complete. I'm in love. Oh, uh, Lisa Eldridge, I knew you knew what you were doing with this color story, girl. Because it's my kind of color story. <laughs> And I love it. I love those colors. I love the story. Dirty, martini, sparkle, 
goodness and of course green I think this is beautiful for holiday perfect for holiday parties and just kind of a year-round beautiful glam look that the eyes are truly the statements of and yeah I'm in love I'm in love okay this is definitely one of my most favorite looks I've done probably um so yeah thanks for hanging out with me today and following along with me watching me recreate Lisa Eldridge's beautiful dirty martini makeup and yeah I will see you guys in the next one stay safe and uh, stay spooky bye now